This is Optimal Living Daily Relationships, Episode 37, Soulful Relationships, Part 2, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Welcome! I'm Joss Marie, right here on the Relationships Edition of Optimal Living Daily, where I read to you from some of the best relationship blogs on the planet every single weekday for free. Today I actually have the second part of a longer post by Steve Pavlina. Part 1 is covered in yesterday's episode, so check that one out first if you haven't already. Also, if you have an author or blog in mind that we've never covered before on Optima Living Daily Relationships and you'd like us to read from, please let us know. Contact us by simply joining our Facebook group. It's not only the easiest way to reach out to our team, but it's also a great way to meet like-minded people. And with that, let's continue optimizing your life. Soulful Relationships, Part 2, by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Everyone and everything you see out there in your world are reflections of you. Just as the cells in an organism carry the same DNA, other people are walking around with some part of you inside them. When you look at other people, you're really looking at yourself. When you notice other people, it's just like your eyes observing your hands. We're all parts of the same whole. Here are some facets of this interconnected model of relationships. Number one, oneness. Other people are not separate and distinct from you. In fact, they are you. Number two, connectedness. You don't have to build relationships with others because you're already connected. You need only tune in to the pre-existing connection that's already there. Number three, no risk. Little or no courage is required to approach strangers. You're never actually building new connections from scratch. You're just recognizing what's already there. Number four, equality. You can feel just as close to total strangers as you do to your friends. Number five, significance. All relationships are significant. None are irrelevant. Even the strangers you pass on the street are important parts of you. Number six, love without attachment. Letting go of harmful relationships is easier because you're still unconditionally connected to everyone else. As you release old relationships that no longer serve you, you'll attract new ones that are compatible with you. Initially, I found this a totally alien mindset. It was only in seeing the results firsthand that I became a convert. Interestingly, I wasn't into subjective reality when I first adopted this mindset but this is in fact the subjective reality view of relationships in a nutshell. One of the side effects of this mindset is that Aaron and I are constantly meeting people through synchronicities, people we feel we were supposed to meet. I first read about these kinds of encounters in the Celestine Prophecy. When you have a certain mindset about relationships, you begin to attract the right people at the right times. That's precisely how Aaron and I met as well. For example, Aaron and I recently spent several days in Sedona, Arizona. This was the first time either of us had ever been to that city. One day we walked into a shop we'd never been to before, picked up a strong vibe from a total stranger, started talking, and 30 minutes later we had become friends and said goodbye with hugs. This woman also sent us a gift in the mail a week later to thank us for some guidance we gave her. For Aaron and me, this has become an increasingly common event. And believe me, before I had this mindset, I could never walk into some random store and expect to be hugging someone I'd never met only 30 minutes later. I think the reason this mindset is so effective is that when you assume a pre-existing connection with another person, she or he will tend to respond in kind. Usually, the best way to break the ice with someone is to assume there never was any ice to begin with. I also like that this is an easy way to identify highly conscious people. The more conscious and self-aware someone is, the more easily and naturally they'll respond to someone who relates to them as a real human being right off the bat. Applying the Empowering Mindset When you adopt the mindset that we're all inherently connected, these are some of the actions and results that will come naturally to you. Number 1. Easy Rapport You'll connect with strangers almost as easily as you connect with your closest friends, sometimes more easily. The difference between strangers and friends is intellectual familiarity. 
but you can tap into an intuitive familiarity even with someone you've never met. Number two, fairness. You'll begin to feel a kinship with everyone, regardless of familiarity. Number three, attraction. Because you're always open to connecting with people, you'll begin attracting new relationships fairly easily. Compatible people will be drawn to you. Number four, synchronicity. You'll experience a swell in synchronicities that lead to chance encounters, meeting people you feel very drawn to meet. Number five, social courage. Have you ever seen someone at a distance you felt you were supposed to meet? Have you ever run into the same stranger multiple times in the same day? With the right belief system, you'll feel confident beginning a conversation with such people. And you'll find that your hunches were right on. You were supposed to meet. Number six, deeper relationships. You'll enjoy deeper, less superficial relationships, getting to know people at the level of soul. Number seven, energy. You'll attract relationships that energize you rather than drain you. And number eight, reading people. Because we're all connected, you can mentally connect with other people and literally share the same thoughts in a way that goes beyond words, voice, and body language. You can even do it at a distance. With practice, you can get an accurate read on someone you've never met, picking up specific data about that person that you couldn't have known in a purely objective sense. Practice increases both your accuracy and your ability to trust the information you pick up. These benefits aren't either or. You gradually gain them as your awareness of our spiritual interconnectedness grows. Fearless Relationships while you can get some of these benefits while still clinging to an objective model of relationships, I think it would be very difficult. The real key is removing fear from the equation. When you can relate to people without fear, which is a natural consequence of the belief that we're all connected, then it becomes much easier to form deep connections with other human beings. If you've been reading my articles for a while, you can probably guess that if you were to meet me in person, you wouldn't have to begin a conversation with me by chatting about the weather. We could just talk, soul to soul, about anything, and you needn't be afraid of me judging you, because my belief is that you're an integral and inseparable part of me. But that's because you already know a lot about me and my mindset from reading my articles. So you already have some familiarity with me, and that reduces your social risk with me. However, the truth is that you can achieve the same level of rapport with a total stranger when you get an intuitive read that she or he will be receptive. Your social conditioning will cause you to focus on the fear of rejection, but with the mindset of interconnectedness, you'll focus on the opportunities for connection instead. My understanding is that the mindset of interconnectedness isn't only more empowering than the objective mindset, it's also more accurate. Our fundamental interconnectedness was one of the most empowering realizations I ever had, and also one of the most humbling. It keeps my ego in check to know that this Steve person I inhabit is just one cell in a much larger body. We all are, and the best we can do with our lives is to achieve the point of optimal balance whereby serving our own needs and serving the whole body are congruent. A body does not survive by sacrificing the cells that serve it, and a cell does not survive by sacrificing the body that hosts it. Interdependence is a higher level of consciousness than independence. Fear serves the latter, fearlessness serves the former. You just listened to part two of the post titled Soulful Relationships by Steve Pavlina of stevepavlina.com. Again, please send us any recommendations if you have an author or blog in mind that you'd like us to cover right here on Optimal Living Daily Relationships. You can contact us right at oldpodcast.com slash listen or by simply joining our Facebook group. We appreciate any and all suggestions. Thank you so much for listening and that's it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you again tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more 
from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.